Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to talk about the layers, the chambers, and the valves of the heart. So before we get started, if you haven't done so already, I know this video just started, but I'm really asking you to support me and support this channel by pressing that like button, give it a thumbs up, and subscribing to my channel if you have done so already. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website at nexusnursinginstitute.com. So let's start with um the layers of the heart so the heart where is it located so if you place your fingers on the left side of the chest this is your key between the fifth and sixth ribs that's where you can feel the pulse you can feel the beat of your heart now from the inside out the layers of the heart are remember we're going from inside out so the innermost layer this is your endocardium endo meaning inside cardium heart the second layer is the myocardium, myo meaning muscle, cardium, heart. And then the outer layer, layer is your pericardium. Peri is the outside cardium heart. So let's talk about the first one, the most inner layer, that is the endocardium. That is the innermost layer of the heart. This consists of, and you need to know this guys, smooth endothelial lining that's rested on the connective tissue. But you need to know that lining is what? Endothelial. Let's keep going. This lining is known as the endothelium, and it consists of endothelial cells that resemble, and you guys also need to know this for ANP, simple squamous epithelial cells. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So that's your innermost layer. Now let's talk about that second layer, the myocardium. Remember I told you when you see that word myo, I want you to think of muscle. By far, the greatest bulk of the heart wall consists of the myocardium. This is the cardiac muscle. And guys, this is the part of the heart that actually works the hardest. Why? It's contracting to pump blood out to the body. It's contracting to pump oxygenated blood out to the body. And it's contracting to um, pump um, unoxygenated blood to go into the pulmonary circulation to pick up oxygen, but the pump it, the pump, the part, I can't speak. The important part to know is that that myocardium is contracting to pump blood. Very important for you guys to know. Now the third layer, this is the outermost layer. This is um, the epicardium, also known as a visceral um visceral cardium. When you see that word visceral, just think of organ, okay? The visceral pericardium, that's the inner layer of the two-layered pericardium because remember the pericardium, that's the outermost layer. But that outermost layer actually has two layers. So the inner layer of that outermost layer, guys, this is the visceral pericardium. The outer layer of that outer layer of the heart, guys. This is your perioidal, oops, sorry, perioidal pericardium. So let's let's just review because you got I got to make sure you guys understand this. You have the endocardium, the myocardium, and the epicardium. In the epicardium, there are two layers of, you know, that outside layer. You have the visceral pericardium, and then you have the perioidal pericardium. All right. So those are the layers of the heart. Great. Now let's talk about the chambers. The right and left side of the heart are completely separated by a wall. That wall is what's known as the septum. I'm going to be going back and forth because I want you guys to have a visual of what the book is talking about. So look, this is the right side of the heart and this is the left side of the heart. You see this layer that's separating this? This is what's known as the septum. OK, now I want you to notice um, medically, guys, when we're speaking about left, right side of the body, your left is that patient's right and your right is that patient's left. So whenever you're saying left or right, you're not talking about your side of the body. You're actually talking about the patient. That's why you see this side is the right side, even though it's my left. And this side is the left side, even though it's my right. So make sure you guys understand that so you don't get confused on your tests. All right. So anyway, this wall that separates the right and left side, this is what's known as the septum. It separates, septum, separates. Okay. Let's keep going. Anyway, the septum, the heart has four chambers. What are those four chambers? The right atrium, the right ventricle, 
the left atrium and the left ventricle. Now let's take a look at those atriums so you can see what they're talking about. Again, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, okay? One, two, three, four. The top are the atriums and the bottom are the ventricles. Let's keep going. The right atrium receives oxygen poor blood. This is blood sometimes uh, depleted of its oxygen supply returning from the tissues and the right ventricle pumps it into the pulmonary circulation. Let's stop right there. Let's make sure we understand exactly what this text is saying to us about that right atrium. Let's go back to the picture. Here's our right atrium. That right atrium is getting unoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. So it's getting unoxygenated blood from the upper extremities in the brain. It's getting unoxygenated blood from the trunk and the lower extremities. And from both of these vena cavas, that unoxygenated blood is dumping right here into the right atrium. The reason that blood is unoxygenated is because all of the oxygen went to the tissues where they belong. So all of the oxygen that was being carried in the blood went to the tissues, and now the blood's coming back to the heart to pick up more oxygen. So that's why coming into the heart, it's unoxygenated or deoxygenated blood. It goes into where? The right atrium. Now from that right atrium, it has to go through this valve that's known as the tricuspid valve or the right AV valve to get to this chamber, which is called what, guys? The right ventricle. Okay, so let's read that again. Make sure we understood. The right atrium receives oxygen poor, deoxygenated blood returning from the tissues and the right ventricle pumps into the pulmonary circulation. So I stopped right here where I showed you the blood goes here, right? But how does it get into the pulmonary circulation? Okay, let's follow the blood. So from the right ventricle, it has to go up here through this semilunar valve. Okay, it goes through this valve to go here to the left pulmonary artery and to the right pulmonary arteries. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm getting over the flu, guys. That word, when you see pulmonary, they're talking about the lungs. So it makes sense that unoxygenated blood, that blood that has, doesn't have much oxygen in it, it comes back to the heart and then it goes to the lungs to pick up what? Oxygen. That makes sense. So when it comes out here through the pulmonary arteries to pick up oxygen, guys, guess what? It goes to the lungs, it picks up oxygen, and now that it's actually oxygenated blood, it comes through here, your pulmonary veins. We're going to talk about that in a second. Let's keep going. The pulmonary arteries carry blood into the lungs where gases are exchanged. Carbon dioxide goes out, oxygen comes in. When you're thinking about the blood, I talked to you guys about this before when I did that video about the blood. I want you to think about the blood as a subway system, as a train and oxygen, vitamins, minerals, nutrients are all riding these trains to go to their target tissues and organs, right? So you have all this unoxygenated blood that goes through that right, ent um, right atrium, right? passes through the tricuspid valve to go to the right ventricle. Then it has to go up through that semilunar valve, past the semilunar valve to go into those pulmonary arteries to pick up oxygen. So it gets to the pulmonary arteries. Oxygen jumps on board, jumps onto the subway, jumps onto that train that we know is blood. And what gets off? All of the, the, the toxins, the, the stuff we don't need, the carbon dioxide, right? All of that, the waste, that's the word I was looking for. All of the waste jump off of the subway, such as carbon dioxide, and the good stuff, such as the oxygen, vitamins, and nu nutrients, they jump into the blood, okay? That's what's happening in um, the lungs, and more specifically, that area of the lungs known as the alveoli, but we'll talk about that later. All right, let's keep going. So the pulmonary arteries carry blood to the lungs where gases are exchanged. Again, oxygen hops on, carbon dioxide, and other waste pop off. The pulmonary veins, so we went from pulmonary arteries, which was bringing blood to the lungs, pulmonary brain uh, veins then return oxygen-rich blood to the left atrium. 
The left ventricle pumps oxygen-rich blood to the aorta, the largest artery of the systemic circulation. Let's stop right there. Let's go back to the picture because we got to make sure we understand what's going on. I want everybody to get an A on their test. We're going to start from the beginning. Blood that doesn't have much oxygen because it got off where the tissues were, right? Oxygen hopped off, right? So blood that's coming back to the heart, that's deoxygenated, it's coming through the superior and then inferior vena cava, and it's all dumping here in the right atrium. From the right atrium, it has to pass this tricuspid valve to go into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, that unoxygenated blood has to pass through that semilunar valve to go into where? That pulmonary trunk to get to the pulmonary arteries. Then when that blood gets into the lungs, the waste such as carbon dioxide hops off and the good stuff such as oxygen hops on, right? So now all of this has happened in the lungs. Now the blood's oxygenated. Since it's oxygenated, it comes back to the heart through what? the pulmonary veins. And this is very important, guys, because for all other parts of the body, if we're talking about a vein, we're talking about, um, well, actually here, we talk about something goes into the body and we're talking about arteries, we're talking about something goes out of the body. So that's important to, 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 to catch. So the pulmonary veins brings oxygenated, not deoxygenated. This blood actually has oxygen now because remember in the lungs, it picked up oxygen. So now oxygenated blood comes back through the pulmonary veins and where do they go? Right here. Now we're on the left side of the heart. That blood on the left side of the heart is oxygenated because it just came from the lungs. It just picked up oxygen. So now we have oxygenated blood in the left atrium and it has to go from the left atrium through the bicuspid valve. Remember, this was the tricuspid valve. Now this is the bicuspid valve. It has to pass the bicuspid valve, go into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, guys, it has to go through here, which is the aortic valve. It passes through here to get through the aorta. And guess what? You see this aorta? That's what brings um, oxygenated blood to your entire body, to your brain, to your arms, to your trunk, to your lower extremities, to your kidneys everywhere, right? That's why you see these. This is where all the blood's going, brain, arms, everywhere. So this aorta is what's bringing that oxygenated blood. And this is what they're saying here. I want to visit one more time to make sure you understand. Again, the pulmonary arteries carry blood to the lungs where the gases are exchanged. Pulmonary veins return oxygen-rich blood. I'm sorry, guys. I got the landscaping people outside if you hear that noise. They bring oxygenated rich blood to the left atrium. The left ventricle pumps oxygen rich blood to that aorta, that very big member of the um, um, artery that I showed you, which brings uh, blood to the circulatory system, which is the entire body. So make sure you guys understand this. Look at what's saying. Right atrium brings unoxygenated blood to the right ventricle. Then that blood goes through the pulmonary circulation to pick up oxygen. Then it's oxygenated and comes through the left atrium to go through the left ventricle, to go through the systemic uh, through the systemic circulation. Okay, guys, very important. I can't stress this enough. You guys have to know the parts of the heart because you'll get test questions where you may not know the answer, but because you understand circulation, you'll get the answer correct. And you have to know the, the terms because your test may not say bicuspid valve. It may just say left atrioventricular valve. It may say mitral valve. We're still talking about the same thing. Your test may not say um, uh, tricuspid valve. It may say right AV valve. They're still talking about the same thing. So make sure you know the names uh, of the, in the parts of the heart. Okay, guys. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's talk about valves because you heard me mention the valves. You heard me mention the tricuspid valve, the, the, the bicuspid valve, the semilunar valve, right? What are these valves? Why are they important? Let's take a look and then make this a little bit bigger for you.
When blood is pumped from either atrium into the corresponding ventricle, the pressure in the ventricle becomes greater than the pressure in the atrium. When that atrium relaxes, blood must be prevented from flowing backwards into it. So I want to show you what they're talking about. I want to explain this to you. Take a look. Look at your this tricuspid and bicuspid valve, right? When blood goes from the atrium to the ventricle, the pressure here in this ventricle is going to be higher than the pressure in the atrium. And so these valves, look at my hands, guys. They're like leaflets. Well, actually, I should do it like this. They're like leaflets, and they keep blood from flowing upwards. You see here, the, this leaflet, which is a tricuspid valve, it keeps blood in this greater pressure um, ventricle from backflowing up into the atrium. So you see, look at my hands again. You see how I told you they're leaflets? Imagine if they didn't shut all the way and they did this and didn't shut all the way or they did this. Then you'd have a whole bunch of unoxygenated blood, blood that's supposed to be moving forward to go to the lungs actually moving backwards and going up into the um, atrium. So this um, valve is very important. It keeps blood from backflowing into the atrium. Very important. And look over here on the left side of the heart. Remember, when we're dealing with the left side of the heart, this is actually um, oxygenated blood that's supposed to be moving forward to go into the circulatory system, right? Imagine if this valve did not close completely. Blood here in the higher pressure ventricle would flow backwards into the atrium. We don't want that to happen. We don't want that blood moving backwards. We want it moving forward to go where it's supposed to go. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me, guys. When the atrium relaxes, blood must be prevented from flowing backwards into it. An atrioventricular or AV valve guards the passageway between each atrium and ventricle. And that's the illustration that I showed you how they close like this, okay? The valves prevent backflow of blood. So it's very important that these valves work the way they're supposed to. The AV valve consists of flaps. Those flaps are known as the cuffs. I want you to think of the cuffs as my fingers. You see how my fingers are interlocking? Those cuffs are supposed to lock, right? That's what they're talking about, the cuffs. These are cuffs. These are fibrous tissues that project from the heart wall. The AV valves are held in place by, look at this, connective tissue cords known as chordae tendine, popularly referred to as the heart strings. Let's go back to the picture because I want you to see what it looks like. So look. You have the valves and then you have these strings. This is what they're talking about. These strings that you're looking at, this is your chordae tendinate. This is what's known as the heart strings, all right? That's what keeps them in place. The AV valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle has three cusps. Guess why it's called tricuspid valve, guys? Ding, 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 the three cusps. That's why it's called tricuspid valve. You have to know the name for both. The left AV valve only has two cusps. And that's why that one's known as the bicuspid valve, right? Also known as the mitral valve. You have to know the names for them, guys, because I don't know how your test is going to come out. So you have to know them. All right. Let me go one more time. Make sure you see. Tricuspid valve, it has three cusps. Bicuspid valve has two cusps. Now, the valves also guard uh, the exits from the ventricles. The three cusps of each semilunar valve are like half, um, shaped like half moons. The semilunar valve between the left ventricle and the aorta is known as the aortic semilunar valve. And the one between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery is known as the pulmonary semilunar valve. I'm going to show you guys what they're talking about here as well. Look at this. So right here, this is your um, aortic semilunar valve. This is what keeps blood 
from flowing backwards. Remember, the blood's supposed to be moving forward to go to the lungs to pick up oxygen, right? This valve is what keeps blood from flowing backwards to go into the right ventricle. We don't want it flowing backwards into the right ventricle. We want it to move forward to go to the lungs to pick up oxygen, okay? This is what's known as your aortic or, excuse me, um, your um, semilunar valve. Where am I? I'm sorry, I keep saying semilunar. Your pulmonary semilunar valve. It's a semilunar valve, but both of them are known as semilunar. So you have to know it by pulmonary. And the way you remember that, guys, is where's the blood going? To the lungs, to the pulmonary system. So that's easy to remember. Just follow the blood. So this valve right here, the semilunar valve, more specifically, is what? Pulmonary semilunar valve. That's where the blood's going to the pulmonary circulation. This is unoxygenated blood that's going to the lungs to pick up oxygen, right? Right. Great. Now let's look at this um this valve right here. This one is your aortic semilunar valve. It's also called a semilunar valve, but it's aortic semilunar valve. Why? Think about it. Where's the blood going? to the aorta. This is oxygenated blood that's coming from the left ventricle and pushing up to go into the aorta. This valve is important because it keeps the blood from going backwards to the left ventricle. We don't want it to go backwards to the left ventricle. We want it to push forward into the aorta to go to the body to feed those tissues with oxygenated blood. So let's take a look at this. Oh, they didn't even give us the flow, but I just explained it to you. Guys, this is your key. Knowing the flow of blood and knowing the correct terms for the parts of the heart, I'm telling you, you will come across test questions where you don't know up or down, but because you understood the flow of the heart, you're going to get it right. Okay. So please, I encourage you to take your time and understand what I just taught you. Part two, guys, I'm going to come with a part two. Part two. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to be going over the heart's own, you know, blood vessels and, um, and, uh, more of the cycle, such as the contraction and the relaxation of the heart. So there will be a part two coming, but it builds on top of each other. So you guys have to understand what I just went over. So take your time, make sure you guys understand it. Let me know what you thought about um, this video in the comment section. Please let me know if you found this helpful to you, if it make things a little bit more clear to you, let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or more extensively on my videos. Don't forget guys, I have a free NCLEX review where I'm going to be going over the new generation NCLEX type questions that are going to be coming out April, 2023. I'm going to be going over that as well. It's going to be a free review, priority and delegation on YouTube Live, Sunday, October 30th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you know anybody that is studying for their boards or you know they just need this information, go ahead and share this with them. I'll see you guys there. You guys will catch me on the next video. One thing, more thing, don't forget, guys, I have audio lessons. If you have a test coming up, like you have to have... A you know, you have to pass this test. Otherwise you're going to be held back. So you have to do really well. Make sure you go on my website and look to see what audio lessons I have available. And I go over the most important things you need to know that you most likely are going to see on your exam. So you better get it right. Check out my audio lessons at nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys will catch me on the next video.